back scary. and relax. That's scary. Melanie That's P. Scary. Scary. Talk That's to him. Scary with Melanie P. That's scary with Melanie P. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Stop the tape. Stop the music. Stop the tape. You think one day I'm going to get this microphone organized before I press the start button. Welcome to another show of the That Scary with Melanie P podcast, where we talk about everything from finances to relationships to sex to menopause. I'm joking, not menopause, but any and everything raw, transparent show, guys. Listen, (laughs) this show is turning lemons into lemonade this show is this is a transparent side that i'm going to share with you guys this week now i want you to brace yourself for what i'm going to say i want you to zoom in to the camera i want you to hold your ear super close to the stereo i want you to whatever you're doing as you're listening to the podcast at this second Whatever you're doing, I want you to stop, pay attention, get your eyes closed if you're on YouTube, get your ears open if you, well, I guess you would need both your eyes and your ears. Anyway, listen to the sentence I'm about to say. For another week, my guest was a no call, no show at the last minute. Round of applause. Round of applause for me and not being in jail right now. Listen, (sighs) I cannot make this up. See, I thought this is, this is what I had thought. This is what I had thought. I thought that when you um, reach 30 shit, I'll say when you reach 25, you understand morals and time management and um, respect. I think you start learning about respect I would say second grade, right? Um, second week in a row, second guest who just didn't have respect for my time. <laughs> Fake smile. And listen, I'm not going to hold back on what happened because, you know, I listen to podcasts. And one thing about podcasts that I really like listening to is the conversation. So, like, when I'm – I listen to podcasts really all day. I listen to it throughout my work day. I listen to it on my car. And so – my favorite shows are the ones that it's like I'm it's kind of like they're having a conversation with me um and I enjoy that. So, here's the truth of what what happened today with this week with this guest. <sighs> this guest was scheduled for 11:30 a.m. I typically record all my shows on Sunday mornings. I record this show for about an hour, which is an hour of setting up in the beginning. Um, so a lot of time to take down after the show. It's so much stuff that goes into, um, you know, creating these shows. 1130 came, no show. They needed to reschedule to three. Three o'clock claim, no show. 330 came, no show. 345, hey, what's your ETA? No, didn't even answer the phone. Didn't even answer the phone. Now, now let me give you a little bit of a background, okay? When you, when it comes to doing a show, there is so much that goes into it. And I'm not even going to give this a lot of time, but I just this is the raw and transparent of life, of my life. And this is how this could, could affect my, well, it's, it's already fucked up my day. Let's just be clear. Because I can see if you're scheduled for something at 11, at 10, 9, 12 and you're, you say, you know, hey, I'm going to be about 10. I will even give you 15 minutes late because stuff happens. But when you change from 11 to three, that's a whole, that is somebody's shift at Walmart. That is somebody's work shift at McDonald's. That is somebody's work shift as a CNA. Okay. That's a whole day. But you know what? Because I understand. I don't understand. I truly don't understand. I do not understand. But because I like to give the listeners, the viewers, good stuff, and I thought that this would be a great conversation. I'm not even going to tell you what it was about because I'm going to have somebody else come on here and do it for you. Um, 
so it was important to me to have the listeners hear this information, right? Um, so I, I said, fuck it, forget it. But here's the thing. Respect people's time. You have no idea what people got going on. You have no idea the work it takes to that goes into certain things. You have no idea how you can affect somebody by even being late. When it comes to being late, like I, what's one thing I struggled with um, in the past couple of years? I've typically always been the kind of person that if you invite me somewhere, I'm going to be there early. If not early, definitely on time. And I feel like I give myself the past five years, I have been late to things. And when I say late, I mean no more than 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes. And I hate that. And I'm working on that. Very rare now that I'm 10 minutes late, even with a baby. Hours late? Changing the time? Like, I just don't respect that. Like, if you have ever experienced that, this this could be in any situation, right? So here's the thing. I think about the post I put on my Instagram this week about the man who got ghosted waiting in a restaurant for a lady from Tinder. That was me. I got ghosted. I got ghosted waiting around my house all day for someone who was a no call, no show. Here is the thing. One of the recurring things I always say, other than being transparent and being raw, is I'm about energy. And I knew my energy was going to be off um, with being late. I definitely for sure knew my energy was going to be off with rescheduling. And I knew for sure, for sure, that my energy would have uh, is uh, would have been 100% off being late after rescheduling a couple of times. Um. But anyway, I don't even want to get that, get that no more conversation. Um, but it does remind me of the guy who got ghosted. So I'm going to go, let me just go back, rewind, mental health check-in. I mean, that's pretty transparent, right? It's, it's pretty apparent on my mental health right now. Like, I'm just so disgusted. I can't even make this up. It's like, it's five o'clock. It's five o'clock. And I was supposed to record my show at 1130 today. 1130. And it's just so fucked up because you, a person who doesn't respect people's time, um, it goes so much deeper than that. It goes so much deeper than not respecting somebody's time. It goes so much deeper than lying. Cause I truly feel like it's just a lie. Like as adults, time manage, if you have a job, you know about time management. And, and here's a, here's a sick thing. I love my people, but damn, really? Because I, these guests, we're my people. And I just feel like, why we got to be like that? Like, why we got to be like that? Because you show a person what you think about them based on how you do their time, whether it's in dating, whether it's in work, whether it's in friendship, the most disgusting, disrespectful thing is to wait, waste people's time. Again, back to that post, right? So the gentleman, if you go to my Instagram and go to the last, um, the last thing I posted, um, this guy was dating on Tinder and he waited and he waited and he waited and the date never showed. And just like that, my, my guest, it was a plan. We had a plan in place. We had a plan in place. And you said, fuck you and fuck your time. The woman who ghosted that man said, fuck you and fuck your time. I just, I'm just not that girl. Like, do you know what kind of person you have to be to not care about somebody like that? Now, again, forget me, forget my guests. I barely know this lady. So, you know, not surprised. She don't owe me nothing, but but at least respect. But again, whatever. Um, but in the dating world, ghosting somebody... He, here it is. I have a story for every single thing, right? So I'm going to tell you about the one time that I got ghosted. Because I should. I don't got no outline. <laughs> I don't have no plan. I don't have anything. I don't have anything prepared. Now, as a podcaster, I do keep like a little folder in my Instagram of things that might be interesting topics to talk about. But I'm going to wing it. 
I am going to wing it. It's just me, my drink, my microphone, and I'm going to wing it. Listen, this is how you know something. Um, this is how you know there is something amazing for me on the horizons, right? Last week, I had a fucked up week. Then weekend comes, my guests don't show. Okay, the next week, my week got better. My week got better. My week got better. Fast forward, this week the guests don't show. And that put me in such a that put me in such a damper. And it's so fucked up because this bitch not coming. And I mean that in the most friendliest way. But I'm I'm ready. But not coming, and no pun intended. You know how that affects me and then it affects my whole entire household? Like, I'm just just thinking about my daughter. Ugh, mm, I'm ready to fight, y'all. Anyway, um, story time. The one time I got ghosted. Okay. This is going to be a good one, though. One thing about me is I have a story for every situation. I, as you know, based on all of my uh, episodes, y'all, that I've ever posted, I have a lot of experience in dating one thing I don't have a lot of experience in is being ghosted or I don't have a lot of horrible dating experiences but the one time that I got ghosted y'all it threw when I tell you this threw me all the way off here's the story and I'm gonna give you the details online dating I met someone and I'm trying to remember because this was obviously a couple of years ago, met somebody, his name was Wendell, and I'm going to tell it. Um, and I'm, I'll be honest, listen, transparent about somebody not showing, transparent about this story, met him online, and what had happened? Met him online and um, was supposed to go out. Something happened, and I think that I wasn't really attracted to him based off the pictures, so it, it kind of just kind of fizzled off. And then fast forward to, like, the end of that year. It must have been around November because it was cold outside. I was single, had nothing to do. We reconnected. We ended up meeting up at this bar here in Charlotte. Um, and this is the thing. I didn't even want to go because – visually it wasn't given so I was like you know uh so my friend was cooking spaghetti on the way to my little date and I said you know what spaghetti sounds really good right about now so I had called her and I said hey girl um I gotta go on this date but you're actually around the corner and um I'm kind of hungry so I might not go she was like you, you should really go she was like you ought to go um girl just go go on your date get you a free drink whatever fast forward go to the um Go to the date, walk in, and there's this guy. Um, long story short, the date ended up being really, really good. Fast forward, long story long, long story short, ended up dating for a couple of months. First red flag was he had a very abnormal relationship with his daughter. Never knew who the mother was. He was abnormally obsessed with his daughter, which at first was like very kind of cute. Like, oh, you know, what a great father. You know what I'm saying? He's really obsessed with obsessed with his daughter. Now, his daughter was in high school. Must have been 11th grade. Um, But then it started to get kind of weird, but I just ignored it. My friends all thought he was gay. Like to this day, it is an inside joke because they think this is a homosexual man. <laughs> I ended up bringing him around my friends, well, twice. Um, I brought him to one of my friends' house for a little get-together. Everybody thought he was my gay friend, and I did not know that until after the fact. Um, and then I brought him to my sister-in-law's 40th, um, 40th birthday party, and everybody thought he was my gay friend. Here's the thing. He look wise wasn't probably anything that you would look twice at. Um, but one thing that women really want in a man is a man that will, you know, lead you. And and listen, I'm not going to say all women, but I know me personally, and I know some women that I've talked to, like we, it's important for a man to be a provider. It's important for a man to be able to give me personally direction. Like one thing about me, one of my major flaws in 
character, not character, but like in life or like just in who I am is that I'm really bad at making decisions. I do not like having to make decisions or I will, when it comes to making a decision, I want to think about every single position, a possible scenario. So instead of me just thinking about something going on and making a decision, I want to rethink and overthink and rethink again. And one of the things about this, I guess, potentially gay man that, which I guess now thinking about it, if he's gay, he probably has a lot of female qualities mentally. But anyway, um, that's what made me, that's what lured me to this person. Like I remember I was buying a car and I don't think I had ever bought a car on my own before then. My parents bought me cars. Then my ex-husband bought me cars. And then when that car went away, I was like, oh shit. So I went and bought a car and I called this guy because I was at a dealership and I said, you know what? I'm going to put my boyfriend on the phone and let you talk to him because I don't want to do this. I remember I took my phone, called this guy, put it on speakerphone. He did all the talking. I just sat there and he handled all the business over the phone. Um, he had a plan all the time for me in terms of like, and this, and looking at it now as a grown, grown woman, it sounds kind of ridiculous. Um, but as far as what we ate, as far as um, what I should do, but it wasn't on no like narcissistic or immature way. It was just very much on, this is what it is, but it, it wasn't, and it wasn't like on some Ike Turner shit. It was just on, this is what it is. Like, this is what it is. Um, you should be eating this cause this is good for you. Hey, ask him a question, direct answer. Okay. Like I didn't use my brain for anything. Like it was just like, okay, cool. So fast forward, um, at the time my lease was up and this is when I was kind of a little bit immature. Um, I wasn't as mature as I am now. Um, and I remember my lease was about to be up. He had, he was having a house being built and he was like, Oh, well, you know, why don't you, since your lease is up, I'm having this big house built. You can come move in with me. And Deep, deep down, I remember thinking, deep down, I remember thinking, ooh, yes, yes, yes. But because of how immature I was, I was just like, I said, I, I don't remember what I said. I just, I just know it was very dumb. I had the most dumbest response ever. Like, oh, well, y'all can just move here. Like, I said something real, real dumb. Like, really, 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 really dumb. Because I was so happy and so excited that this was actually going somewhere and that, you know, oh, wow, we can move in together and all these things and start a life, blah, 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 blah. Um, I said something dumb. And I feel like that was really, not that this is my fault, but I feel like that was kind of the beginning of the end. Re After that, my brother had a baby shower that was co-ed. He was supposed to come. He didn't come. And then that next week, his grandma died. And he kind of was kind of like slowly, slowly backing away. So get into the ghosting part. Literally one week his grandma died. He went to Georgia and then I never heard from him again. My dumb ass going to cash out this nigga some money for, you know, for, for his family. You know, like I wanted to send him a card because he had death in the family, whatever. I think his last text to me was thanking me for the, for the card or whatever, for the money. I had my friend and I, and I wish I could say his name. You know who you are. <laughs> I told my friend about it and I, me and him actually ended up, he actually ended up driving me over to this guy's house to like, to like have my binoculars on and um, like kind of keep up, keep eye out. Like keep up, I wanted to see what was going on. So I remember being in the car with my friend crying, crying in the, in the front seat in the passenger seat feeling so stupid. And finally he said to me, he was like, he's just not that into you. And I was like, huh? Like, what does that mean? Like, like what do you mean he's not that into me? He is just not that into you. And it was such a foreign thing for me. It was such an embarrassing thing for me. And it was such a very like, what? Like, what does that mean? Um, and I say all of this story to say that affected me. Like that affected me. Now, not very much, but it did affect me, you know, to have my guy friend be like, girl, like, that's the good thing about having a guy friend on your team because they're not going to sugarcoat it like your girls might do. I remember being sad and depressed because this happened to me and it was me, my guy friend and two of my girlfriends on a group text. 
and it was like maybe three in the morning and I was texting them cause I was just something stupid. And, um, he just replied all and said, he don't want you. He don't want to be with you. And at that point, first of all, I was mad and you know, who you are. I was mad that he even put that on my group text with my friends. It was very embarrassing, but then it was just like, damn, he, you know, it's the truth. But that that affected me. And I say all that story to say on this random, no outline show, the woman who ghosted that nice gentleman. Now, I posted this story on my Instagram. And one thing that someone said that is really what I was thinking was like, you know, I wonder who, who, who this was because this guy, I wouldn't say he was a looker either. He looked, you know, not the best. Um... And I was really curious to know who the girl was that ghosted him. And my advice in my store, in my Instagram was like, you know, the guy showed up with flowers. He had planned this nice ass date at a restaurant. First date, first time meeting. Um, that's too much. So let, let me give the guys a tip. Especially if you're online dating, especially if you're online dating. Your first of all, here's tip number one. Never do a lot of back and forth. The guy said that they had been talking for at least two or so weeks, getting to know each other, making plans. To me, two weeks is too long. When you're dating, that means you have time to date. Like you're not on a dating, you shouldn't be on a dating website unless you have time to date. And so if I have time to date and I've talked to you on a Monday and we're talking for three days in a row and what well, that's too much, that sounds psycho. If I talk to you, if I meet you on a Monday online and we're talking and we're talking and we're talking, I must say Friday, I need to be meeting you at a bar for a drink. Just a quick little, not quick, but like, you know, a little meet and greet for this guy to plan a whole, um, lavish date with flowers. Like I would, it, I'm gonna tell you something. If I met a guy, if I was single and I met a man on Tinder and on our first day, he bought me like a dozen roses, unless he was really, really fun or unless there was some type of abnormal connection over the, over the phone or whatever, it would be kind of weird. I think that would be kind of weird. It's too much, too much too soon. If a guy wanted to have a sit down dinner for our first time meeting. Like this is not, I met you um, in person already at a grocery store or a friend, you know, said that we should be together or not be together, but say that we should meet because we have a mutual friend. That's maybe something different. But I'm meeting you on a dating website where people should be meeting a bunch of people all at once. A sit down dinner is too much. That means that we got to sit there, meet, wait for the waiter to come, wait for the waiter to leave order drinks, wait for the food to come, wait for, I mean, it's just too, 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 too much. And it's too much of a commitment up front. A dinner can be way too long of a time when you know that this person is not the one too much. So no flowers. This is my advice. No flowers, no sit down dinners. Hey, let's grab a drink on Friday night. Okay, cool. Women like, obviously people who can make decisions for us. <laughs> a plan cut and dry. Hey, I'm enjoying talking to you. There's a, there's a cool bar here on this place. What are you doing Friday at seven? Okay, cool. Let's meet there. Boom. And dare I say never. And I think I said this last week, but never put all your eggs in one basket. So honestly, what I would have hoped for that nice gentleman would have been for that to happen to him. And then him to be feeling a kind of way, which he's human, so he should, but for him to get back on his apps, plural, find somebody else, meet them the same night and keep it moving because you have to be really, really invested to be that sad enough to go and make a video about yourself being sad about someone you never met before. Like that's a lot. And so there may be a need for some therapy there. I'm just saying, um, but it's sad because Again, he was interesting on the eyes, but that's an example of a potentially good person in this example, good guy who this could happen to him. And now he might not be a good guy to the next girl, or this might change who he is for the next 
10 dates because now he's bitter and now he has baggage, which again, too much, but you just never know how ghosting somebody can affect people. So you know who you are and you know who, who you are that ghosted me. Um, and if you're gay, I would love for you to tell me that because my friends thinking that somebody I was dating was gay. That was embarrassing. Looking back at that, that was really, really embarrassing. Um, if I had a friend and I, you know, look, and now I'm looking back on it. I can kind of think about some of the looks that one of my friends was giving me that she was thinking something, but they, they didn't tell me until after. And they had met him maybe like twice after that. Um, but it's too much. If you, if you dating somebody and you think he gay, ask that question. And here's the funny part. Something in me made me ask him if he was gay. And I don't remember what it was. Huh. And now I feel bad because I said his name. But if you are gay, if you were gay, I would love to know where you are right now. Like, I would love to know, did you marry a man? Are you with a man? You know, did you come out? Who was that little girl's mother? Whatever happened to her? Whatever happened to the little girl? Is she in college? You know, where's the mother? Mm, so many questions. Well, let me see what else I got, y'all, because, you know, I ain't got no outline because I'm just really winging it because I say, you know, I'm not going to let um this person ruin my show for today, which whatever. Here's something else that might be kind of controversial. And this is me being raw and transparent for the millionth time. Chris Sean and Blueface. Guilty pleasure. I love Zeus Network. I love Zeus Network. I pay for the subscription. I watch their shows every Sunday. It helps me get ready for the week. Don't judge me. Krishan and Blueface, they have a um they have a show that is in season two of their lives. Now, if you don't know, Krishan is pregnant by Blueface. Blueface has at least one other kid who he was just asking the little boy who couldn't be no more than six, maybe seven, if he was gay because he wasn't looking at strippers. Now, let me repeat that. Blueface, who is disrespectful to women, who is really gross to me in every way, um, has a son and he had strippers. His son must be six or seven at the most, and I think I'm giving him a couple of years, so he's probably six. Blueface had strippers at his house. The little boy was looking for some food in the pantry, and Blueface asked his little boy, why are you not out here with the strippers? Are you gay? Are you gay or something? So, okay, that should tell you all you need to know. Krishan was on her recent episode, and again, I'm sure this has already been taped a while ago because she's still pregnant, so that kind of gives you how the story ends, saying crying saying that she did not want to have this man's baby um saying how he don't want no kids and she don't want to have no kids by him and she was pleading to her mom and her family to just help her and let her have an abortion because she did not want to have this man's baby here's an unpopular opinion let her have the abortion let her have the abortion that's my opinion it is what it is a lot of men do this thing where they will get you pregnant just to trap you. I was looking at a podcast recently and this girl was talking about this and this thing was really interesting to me. She was saying men should not be rushing to get you pregnant if they're not trying to marry you. Why would you rush to make a woman a baby mama but not rush to make her a wife? And that thing made me feel some kind of way for sure. And so I say that to say that with Krishan, I feel like that's what's happening with Blueface. I feel like Blueface thought that he was rescuing Krishan, which I'm sure in her mind he is. But if you look at it, Krishan, her popularity, her status, her money, I think it's surpassing Blueface, right? And I think that he's the kind of man that's very deep down insecure and wants to have likes to have control over these women. And I think that he has intentionally gotten her pregnant, has intentionally embarrassed her on public in public and has intentionally brainwashed her to think that she needs him. And I think that her 
having a baby by Blueface is, I don't want to say a death sentence, because anything can be corrected and children are beautiful and blah, 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 PC, PC. When you have a kid with somebody, especially someone that you're not thinking of in a long-term capacity, especially someone who is not even your spouse, y'all could be dating today and, and not dating tomorrow. Now, here's the thing. I know people can get married today and get divorced tomorrow, the same thing. But I feel like someone or a relationship who has gone the the um the steps to actually get married before God, I feel like you have a lot more stability, a lot more. If I had to bet on you, I bet on you before I'm betting on somebody who's just dating. Um, I am all for Krishan not having that baby because Blueface is trying to trap her. He literally said, where do you think you're going to be? Or when, like, he was basically saying, she was saying how, she, you know, he can watch the baby while she has to go out and perform. And he was like, no. He was like, where do you think the baby going to be whenever you're performing? It's going to be with you. AKA, you, you won't be able to perform. So it's a trap. Like, it's a trap. Abort, abort, abort. Her mom has, like, 12 kids. So I, I think Krishan had, like, 11 brothers and, and 11 brothers and sisters. Um, and her mom, who doesn't even have any teeth, um, was encouraging her to not abort that baby. And I am pro-life, but I'm before I'm pro-life, I am pro a woman's choice. Now, the opposite side of that is Krishan has admitted that she's had several, several, several abortions already. Um, and that really is horrible, to be honest with you. That's really, really bad. And that's a deeper conversation because why are you getting pregnant so much? Why are you not using protection? Why are you finding yourself in a pattern of being with a man that you don't even feel comfortable to have a baby with? So you have to abort the baby like that is not good. That is really, really not good. So before you have an abortion, you ought to enlist a therapist and really do the work and get some help. But on the same token, and this could be God's way of sitting her down and making her kind of face the facts and kind of get the help. Cause you know, God works in mysterious ways. Um, but mm -mm. a baby by blue face. No, she's like 22, 23, a baby by blue face. No, have the abortion. I thought it was really weird. And I guess, you know, I don't have any kids that are old enough to have kids. Um, so I don't know if I can even speak to this because I don't know if I would encourage my daughter to have a abortion, but I know damn sure I would be encouraging my daughter not to be with somebody like Blueface. Like, that's crazy to me. And I know for sure if I was rich, my mama would have some teeth. I don't understand why Krishan and mama don't have no teeth. Krishan and Blueface are always throwing money around. Why her mama don't got no teeth? What else we got going on in this random episode? I, I'm not going to let this shit get to me. Here's something else. And this probably be the last thing. I was watching something. I was listening to something on Instagram. You know, my go-to for all my news, my social news. And um, they were saying that women are starting to now date men like way younger than them and how that's the new secret code to having a good relationship. So all before you would always hear women say that, um, I like me an older man. I like me an older man. Um, because older men are more mature. Older men want to settle down. Older men have typically been married before. So they know how to like be a husband, blah, blah, blah. That's my stance. And I'm sticking to it. But this dating coach was saying, he gave examples. He gave, um, he gave examples of, uh, who is it? It was Gabrielle Union and her husband, which that's not a good example because he done had a whole baby on on her. Um, was it Russell and Cece? It was like maybe six celebrity couples who have a huge age gap where the guy is super young and the woman is super old. And they were saying how that's the new formula because all these people have really, really successful relationships. And I'm gonna have to disagree with that. Now, I don't, I don't agree or disagree on that because what I'm learning in my older age is that things like that, I think 
I think if I was in the dating world, I would definitely still be going for someone super older than me for sure. Especially now that I don't want to have any more kids. Um, I think the oldest I would go would probably be 50. I would say 50, 55. I would say 50. I would go 50. I would do a whole 10 years older at most. That's my thing. I'm going to stick to it. But I also think that those are not surefire ways to be like, oh, you know, dating somebody much older than me is going to be like, okay, this is going to work this time or this is going to really, really work. Because what I find is that it's not the age, whether you're older or younger, it's really based on compatibility. You got to be compatible. And by compatible, I mean, you got to have shit in common. You got to have the same morals. You got to have the same, not the same, but you have, you have to have similar morals. You have to have similar long-term and short-term goals. You got to have similar uh, personality traits, meaning not, damn, I'm saying it's all wrong, not similar personality traits, but things where your personalities have to mesh. I'm thinking of two couples that I know, and I'll say, I was, actually, I'm thinking of a lot of couples that I know. And the couples that I know who are a lot, a lot, a lot alike, they don't seem to make it, I feel like. But the couples who have, well, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I guess it goes down to compatibility because this whole thing, all these cliches, data older man that works, you know, opposite attracts that works. None of that shit is true. It's really, really not true. I need to have a whole episode de dedicated to what I've learned in the dating world because I've learned a lot. And if somebody would have told me this shit, I would have been, I would have known a lot more than I know. I would, I would be, you know, this ain't about me. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Like when it comes to dating, man, it's not about the cliches. It's just, I think it comes down to 100% compatibility and not ignoring red flags and asking the questions and having the really, really hard conversations. Um, period, point blank. There's, I don't think there's no for sure code. Like this guy said, okay, the new code now is women date 10 years younger because that's what's working now. No. Gabrielle Union and her husband are a really bad example <laughs> because again, he cheated on her and had a whole side baby. So that's a bad example. And that's a whole nother story. There is no fucking cheat code. The cheat code is do the work. Don't ignore the red flags. Be honest with yourself and don't date out of desperation. You know, there's nothing wrong with being alone. There's nothing wrong with being single and you have to trust yourself. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, this is a short episode because I'm kind of still pissed. I'm not, you know, honestly, this was kind of like therapy for me. This, I, this episode was there. I got, in the beginning of this episode, I was real pissed. I was really, really irritated. I don't think I even had no food today. And it's, what time is it? Oh my God. It is almost six o'clock. I ain't even had a meal. I've not even had food today. So, you know, I'm feeling, I was feeling real, really, really, really even more angry because I was hungry too. <laughs> I was feeling bad. But this show was really my therapy. I hope you guys got something out of this show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Listen, I might not have no guests on here for a while um, because these people are really getting on my nerves. But I'm not going to let nobody stop my joy, stop my passion. Thank you for listening. Make sure you go to YouTube and make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube. Make sure you have liked my YouTube. Make sure you have followed me on Instagram. Big shit is coming because the devil only be coming at you hard. Cliche, cliche. The devil only be coming at you hard, man, when it's here on the horizon of something. And I've been having these dreams. I have been having a lot of dreams lately. And I'm kind of nervous because something is happening. Something's about to happen. I pray to God it's something good because it's been a rough couple of weeks for your girl. It really, really has. It really, really has. But I come on, I've come on this show because I don't want nobody to ever think that shit's just always good, that things are always going to be great. Things will always work out, you know, perfectly and there won't be any obstacles because that's just life. But I do want the takeaway from this show to be that when life give you lemon, lemons, you make a lemonade margarita and keep it moving. Thank you guys so much. I will see you on next week's episode.